Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at how collision theory can be used to explain the effect of concentration, temperature and surface area on rates of reaction. If we start off with a recap then, you should remember that for a reaction to occur you need to have collisions, particles bouncing into each other. Those collisions also have to have enough energy for that reaction to occur. Now that energy is called the activation energy. There are also two things that can affect the rate of reaction, which are the frequency, which is the number of collisions per second, and the energy, which we've just talked about. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about what collision theory is, and we're going to use temperature, concentration, and surface area as examples. If we have a look at the temperature to begin with then, as you can see on the left here, the particles are moving really slowly because I'm at a low temperature. If they're moving slowly, it means they've got very little energy, therefore the reaction is going to take a long time. So if I increase the temperature, you can see the particles are moving faster. This is because they have more energy. If they have more energy, they're moving faster, it means there are going to be more successful collisions per second. Now that's a really important key phrase that you need to get in here. And the more successful collisions per second, the faster the rate of reaction. The second factor we're going to look at is concentration. So if we start off with a low concentration, you can see on my left here, I've got very few particles. I've only got seven of my marbles in there. Therefore, there are going to be less frequent collisions, which means I'm going to have a slow rate of reaction. However, if I increase the concentration, it means I add more particles in. Notice my volume has stayed the same. More particles means more frequent collisions per second, therefore a faster rate of reaction. And that saying more frequent collisions is going to get you the extra marks in this, so make sure you learn that phrase. If we have a look at surface area next then, this one usually only involves when you've got a solid, so you can see I've got my dice in the middle which is going to act as my marble chip. If I've got a low surface area, you can see that the particles can only hit on the sides. There's very, very few areas that it can actually hit. But if I break this up, break it in half, I've got a more area, therefore more collisions can occur. Therefore, I'm going to get more frequent collisions, and therefore it's going to speed up my rate of reaction. Now, by increasing the surface area, and if you have a tablet, you can increase this even further by taking the tablet and crushing it up, as you can see what I'm doing here. By doing this, you're giving yourself a higher surface area to volume ratio, which is another key phrase I'd like you to learn and get into any exam question based on this. So in summary then, if you increase the temperature, you increase the energy that the particles have, therefore they're moving faster, there are more successful collisions per second. If you increase the concentration, you have more particles, and therefore you have more frequent collisions. And finally, if you increase the surface area, you have a higher surface area to volume ratio, there's more area for collisions to occur, therefore there are more frequent collisions, which gives you a faster rate of reaction. Okay, let's have a look at what the examiners can ask you then. So I've got three straightforward questions for you here. Number one, explain the effect of decreasing the temperature on the rate of reaction, so lowering the temperature. Talk in terms of collisions, what's going to happen. Number two, explain the effect of increasing the concentration on the rate of reaction. So if we increase the concentration, what happens to the number of particles? What effect does that have on the collisions? And so on. And then number three, explain the effect of increasing the surface area on the rate of reaction. So again, how do I increase the surface area? Crushing it, breaking it up. What effect does that have on the surface area to volume ratio? What effect does that have with the collisions? Have a go at all three questions and we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's have a look at the answers then. So question one said, explain the effect of decreasing the temperature on the rate of reaction. So if we decrease the temperature, the particles have less energy or are moving slower. And if they're moving slower, there will be less successful collisions per second. Really important phrase there. I'd like you to make sure you get that in every single time. And it's not just getting less successful collisions, it's less successful collisions per second. That's the really key bit. And if there are less successful collisions per second, you'll have a slower rate of reaction. Question two, explain the effect of increasing the concentration on the rate of reaction. So if you increase the concentration, nice and simply, there are more particles. If there are more particles, there are more frequent collisions. Don't just say more collisions, you won't get the mark. 
you need to say about the frequency, so there are more frequent collisions. You could also put more collisions per second, but try and get the scientific terminology that the examiner wants. And therefore, a faster rate of reaction for your third mark. And then on to number three, explain the effect of increasing the surface area on the rate of reaction. If you increase the surface area, you have more solid to react with, or a higher surface area to volume ratio. Either of those gets you the first mark. Again, if you've got more particles, you're going to have more successful collisions per second. You could have, again, put more frequent collisions there. That's something I'd perhaps prefer, and therefore a faster rate of reaction again. So that should give you three marks for each of them. Hopefully you got that. And there is a review question just to end this video, which is a chemical reaction between lumps of calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid produces calcium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. However, the reaction is too slow to produce enough calcium chloride in time. Explain three different changes that could be made to the reaction to speed up the rate of reaction. So identify the three different things you could do to begin with, increase the concentration, increase the surface area, and increase the temperature, and then explain to me how that's going to affect it. Why does increasing the concentration affect the rate of reaction, which is what we've just been talking about. That brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, click on like down below. You can have a look at the latest video, you can visit the website, and you can also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye now.